Hi, thanks for joining me. Um, I'm feeling a bit bewildered at the minute. I'm feeling slightly lonely uh, because there's no one here. I'm talking to an empty church. Uh, there's nobody at worship at nine. Where is everybody? That's the big, big question, isn't it? Where is everybody? What on earth is going on? Well, today as a church, we've escaped the building. We've, we've left. Uh, we've headed down to Lincoln School and to our friends down, down there as we help them get ready for school starting in a few days' time. It's great to be able to partner with them. Uh, we, we, we've enjoyed that over the last few years. And uh, it was great during this week we were able to get R&B2 food truck down and feed the staff for lunch. So I know that went down well as well. I never got anything, but that's Okay. So it's just us today. But I really wanted just to share with you a little bit about my walk of faith. As I've said before, I was growing up in Portadown in Northern Ireland, and church was really important to my family and to me as a child. If you were alive and breathing, basically, you were at church. No, that, that was the deal. There were no questions asked. That's just what Sunday was all about. And we just did it. And there was no real problem with that, up until I hit my teenage years. And it, it, you, know, you know what it is? It's like, it seems in the blink of an eye, everything changed for me. And I wanted to do other things. Church, in my mind, was just going to get in the way of having fun. At least that, that's how I was seeing it. Faith, for me, needed to take a back seat, you could say. Yeah, it was, you know, it had played such a prominent part, and now it needed to take a rest, I suppose. 
Uh, and I was looking to head down a different road. I'd, you know, I had a blast. I thought my life couldn't get any better than this as I hung out with my friends and we did things together. Um, parties, sport, life was just perfect in my eyes. But there was one real problem. I couldn't find real fulfillment. Now, in my early teenage years, I didn't think about fulfillment really. But there was something missing. Nothing really lasted. I was always trying to find the next thing to give that buzz. You know what I mean? And I think many of us are like that today. We live in this world where there has to be something new, something different. What would that be? I started to question that. And I think looking back, I started to lose sight actually who I was. And I was trying to fit in to a world where I seemed cool, where all my friends wanted to hang around with you. It was a new world I was playing in, and I was enjoying the game. But I needed things to change. I knew that. Deep down, I knew this wasn't really for, for, for me. But of course, you dig your heels in. Uh, I really struggled with letting God into my, my life again. Because there was a little part of me or a big part of me at that stage that said, remember, it's not going to be any fun. And that was a real struggle. I was resisting the urge to stop what I was doing and even start to take stock of my life as I went into my middle teens. But fortunately for me, I had a few Christian friends who still stuck with me. Even though I wasn't the person that, that I had been, they hadn't given up on me. And, and one night with them, I had a real encounter with God. I, I would say that God sort of stopped me in my tracks. It was sort of like that, okay, Keith, stop. Stop. I would describe it as maybe hitting a road, roadblock. You know, I, I didn't know what way to turn, but I couldn't go the way I was going. And my encounter with God that night set me off on a different path again. And everything for a while just seemed great. I'd, I'd met God, I'd come back to God. And of course, you know, you, you, you were riding along on the crest of a wave. A bit, bit, bit like a surfer, and I can't surf. I can hardly swim at times. But it, it, it's like that, you know, you just, just felt that everything, you were riding this wave and everything was great. But, you know, things get in the way. You, you crash and burn at times. And so this God journey for me was difficult. And that's, was, that's the story that I want to tell. We often say, you know, when, when you come to know Christ, everything's wonderful. And it is. But it's not perfect. We still face the same challenges. And so the old life and the friends that I had had kept pulling at me, kept tugging at me. It was like being in a tug of war. You know, my arms were out, outstretched sort of thing. And I had my Christian friends pulling me this way and I had my other friends pulling me that way. And I felt that I was straining and just ready to break at times. The thing that I didn't realize was at one, some stage I was going to have to let go of one side or the other. Two sides were pulling desperate to pull me away and closer to, to them. I wasn't ready for any of this. I was totally unprepared because I kept thinking to me, oh my, surely God will make things easy. What's this all about? What is going on here? And I realized that in later life, it was a real battle for my soul. That's what was happening all around me. I would do great things and feel great and then fail miserably the next day. In fact, maybe an hour or two after feeling great, I failed miserably. Let's be honest about that. So the faith walk was a very staggered, stumbling, uphill, downhill, sometimes falling into ditches. Yeah. The battle was on. And the question was, who would win in the end? So by now, I guess that 
you know who won because I'm sitting here having this conversation with you today about Jesus. My faith walk was a battle and it still is a battle. That's what life's about. Don't be surprised by that because it's written in every page of the Bible. Scripture tells us about the challenges. We read about the great heroes of faith who never had it easy. It was always tough. They always had to work through and push through. But I discovered that faith in Jesus meant that there was always victory. See, that's the great thing. There's always victory when Jesus is in your life. And when I faced down the giants in front of me, and through all my trust in Jesus, it was game over. Giants were defeated. Those things came tumbling down. He always wins. Satan and the draw of the world has to surrender to the power of Jesus Christ, the Savior that I was now serving. I've told you before that my walk has been up and down. I t- talked about it being a roller coaster, and I hate roller coasters. I used to love them. The older you get, I don't know what, what happens to you, but uh, yeah, the whole up and down movement just uh, does not suit my stomach. But that's the way my, my, my life has always been. You know, this, this life with Jesus, this norm, even normal life was for somebody who has no idea who God is or has no interest in it. Your life's up and down. There are times that are good. You know, we often give off to God and think, you know, oh, God has gone so far away from me. I feel so far away from God. I used to say that all the time. You know, where are you, God? What's God going on here? But as I look back, I realized that it wasn't God that had gone anywhere. It was me. I had wandered off. I hadn't stayed close to him. I hadn't worked on my relationship with him. And so I would rant and rave at God and say, come on, come on, where are you? And he was really saying, I'm here. Where, where are you? Where have you gone? It's been so easy just to distance ourselves from God, so easy to distance ourselves from church, especially through this pandemic times. It's time to come back. It's time to be close to him. It's time not to walk away, but to walk to him. One day, as I said before, I would be up for anything. God could tell me to go and do something, and I would go and do it. And yet other days it would feel as if someone had punched me in the gut and I was actually lying on the floor as if I had been hit with a knockout punch. And that still happens from time to time. But as the Phil Wickham song says, the battle belongs to the Lord. You know, each time I picked myself up and dusted myself down, I seen that I was getting stronger. You'll find this as well. Every test, every trial, every difficult time, When we break through, we become stronger. And we start to rely more on Jesus. I wonder, any any of you, I'm sure you have watched the Olympics. I enjoyed them. Really enjoy watching all the different sports. But every time I watch a hurdle race, I don't know what it is, but in my my mind, I think that's how my mind thinks and, and works. I think how similar is a hurdle race to the race I'm running and you're running with God. I know that might sound weird. What, what, what's he getting at? Well, just remember, I'm from Ireland, so we do think differently. We are a bit strange, you know, but in a good way. But I think I remember years ago hearing someone, don't even know who it was, don't know where it was, but I heard someone talking that following Jesus is like a race. It's like a hurdle race. So you're in full stride. And then you see this obstacle in front of you. Can you clear it? Yeah, most of the times you you, you do. But every once in a while, you hit it. And you get knocked out of your stride. You have a wee stumble. You try and get back on your feet. Try and get back on your stride. And then the next hurdle is in front of you. And you have to try even harder then to get over that next hurdle. And that just goes on and on and on until you reach the finish line. Sound familiar? A bit like our lives? You know, we seem to be in our stride and everything's going well. Obstacle in front of us, 
smack, we hit it, we fall, we stumble, we try and get back up. It's hard to get back into the stride again. And as soon as we're nearly getting there, there's the next hurdle. And oh boy, you have to get in all your strength to pull yourself over and to, to get, get over it. And you feel good about that and you go on to the next one and so on and so on and so on. That's what living this life with God looks like. Do you know what I mean? Have you experienced that? Do you feel maybe today you're hitting more hurdles than you're actually clearing? I've been through a period of time when all I thought I, I did was knock hurdles down. There didn't seem to be any flow. There didn't seem to be, you know, a great stride pattern in, in my life. It was just stumbling around. I felt that you feel desperate. But I realized that there was a way out of this. You see, I, I just needed to get up close and personal with my coach to tell me how to do this race. And Jesus, of course, is that coach. And he knows how to get this sorted. He knows how to get me over the obstacles that I'm going to face as life go, goes on. So what obstacles are standing in front of you today? Do they seem so big that there's not one chance of you getting over it in your mind? Do, you, do they seem huge? They may seem huge to you, but to Jesus, can I tell you, they're nothing. They're like a speck. He looks at them and goes, hey, no problem. We have got this. Just trust in me. Joshua 1 and 9 says this. Haven't I commanded you strength, courage, don't be timid, don't get discouraged. God, your God, is with you every step you take. You see, that's what I needed. I needed the courage to know that every step that I took, God was with me. So when the hurdle came, he would help me to get over it. And yeah, every now and again I would clip it but he would keep me going. He would keep me going. Never forget that. Victory's always in our sights when Jesus is in our lives. Let me say that again. Victory's always in our sight when Jesus is in your life. The walk of faith is one littered with obstacles, but Jesus lifts us over them. Store that in your memory. Store it in your heart. The, the hard times, the battles we face only make us stronger. They make us rely more on Jesus. So, can I ask you to do what I had to do many years ago and still have to do almost every day is to trust him more, to commit to him, to strive to walk with Jesus every day. It works. I can testify that I know that personally. And I know that we're all struggling with different things. But when you come close to God, when you're surrounded by God's people, when you get into the family of God, the support mechanism is there to help you through. Jesus is the greatest support mechanism that we can have. His church is as well. That's what excites me about being part of God's church, of God's family. You see, Jesus is the greatest coach the greatest mentor and the only saviour who can lead us to victory and to that ultimate prize of spending eternity with him. What a reward. You know, what a reward for getting through life with Jesus by our side that we spend eternity in heaven with him. Let us pray together. Lord, we know that life ain't easy. And that we will face stuff that we would rather avoid at all costs. But we do have the assurance that you will never leave us. Or make us face anything that we can't handle when we place our trust and faith in you. Help us to become people of faith. Committed to serving you. To getting to know you more and more. And being part of a community of faith that supports loves and cares for each other and all those around us. 
Never let us forget your words. Haven't I commanded you? Strength, courage. Don't be timid. Don't get discouraged. God, your God, is with you every step you take. Lord, we thank you for that. Thank you for that promise. Your promises are always true. Thank you for always having our backs. And we pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Can I ask you, as we, as we finish, it's been a bit of a different day. You have know, heard a song earlier. We will finish with a song. But can I ask you maybe to think of emailing me? I'd love to hear from you. It's Keith. That's K-E-I-T-H at fpchutch.org. If you're struggling to get over some of those hurdles in your life, I would love to meet up and have a conversation with you. We'd love to walk that journey with you. Or maybe like me in my early life, you, you were struggling to let Jesus have control of your life. Again, I would love you just to reach out because we'd love to have that conversation and go on that journey of faith with you. So we're back here next Sunday, August 22nd at 9 a.m. I would love to see you in person. We have a great family here. We're trying to build a family of faith that will nurture your kids, you as a person, those who you, who you know. Come and be part of this great uh, place of faith, this great family of faith. So drop in. Think about that. Drop in next Sunday. Uh, spend some time with us in worship. Just be relaxed. Just Come in as you are, shorts, your jeans, whatever makes you comfortable. Uh, you're going to be more than, than welcome. And I really hope that I can see you all soon. Have a great week. Be still and know that the Lord is in control.
peace and kindness will find 